Hi guys, Ricky Pope here. And today on the Christian Nerds Unite podcast, I talk with Jula Wren, the Mandalorian of Tucson, and share some nerdy news. And we'll get to all of that right after this. 2022 is flying by so fast, and I, I just reviewed my goals for the year. Uh, it's not too late to set some effective goals for 2022 for yourself. And the Goal Process 101 ebook helps you do just that. With a straightforward process and practical exercises, you'll be guided to set the right goals for you and set out a plan to achieve them. Get your copy of the Goal Process 101 ebook um, by going to goalprocess101.com. Use CNU2022 at checkout to save 10%. Now, back to the show. Today on the show, I talk with Jula Wren about how he is using a Mandalorian cosplay for more than just fun. He's making a difference in his community, but let's start with some scripture and some nerdy news. Hebrews 10, 24 through 25. And let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds, not giving up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day approaching. And uh, I think this one really speaks to what Jula Wren is doing in Tucson. Romans 12, 4 through 8. For just as each of you has one body with many members, and these members do not all have the same function, so in Christ we, though many, form one body, and each member belongs to all the others. We have different gifts according to the grace given to each of us. If your gift is prophesying, then prophesy in accordance with your faith. If it is serving, then serve. If it is teaching, then teach. If it is to encourage, then give encouragement. If it is giving, then give generously. If it is to lead, do it diligently. If it is to show mercy, do it cheerfully. Now, some quick nerdy news before we get into our interview with Jula Wren. Uh, Morbius, starring Jared Leto, panned by critics with a 17% on Rotten Tomatoes. I haven't seen anything that low in a long time. Uh, but with an audience rating of 70%, uh, actually took the box office first place with just over $39 million over the weekend. So it looks like the audience definitely does not agree with the critics. Uh, Dune wins big at the Oscars with 10 nominations. It walks away with six wins in cinematography, editing, score, visual effects, and production design and sound. A, a beautifully produced film, and I think those wins confirm that. Uh, it is definitely worth watching again if you've seen it once, and if you haven't seen it yet, you owe it to yourself to watch Dune. Star Wars new Disney Plus series Obi-Wan Kenobi release date has been delayed by two days from Wednesday, May 25th to Friday, May 27th. Um, the May 25th release date was touted as a special day because it was going to be the 45th anniversary of Episode 4, A New Hope. Other than wanting the show to be on Fridays instead of on Wednesdays, there's no real clear reason for the change. Uh, Two episodes will drop that day, and uh, I honestly can't wait to watch. Christopher Lloyd will be in the cast of The Mandalorian Season 3 that just wrapped up filming, along with all the usual cast. We are expecting Bo-Katan's group of Mandalorians to resurface, and finally, with the Dark Saber in play and Mando's honor at stake, expect a trip to the homeworld of Mandalore at some point. We are hoping to see Season 3 later this year. 
that's all the nerdy news I have time to share with you today, and uh, it seems fitting that we ended with The Mandalorian, since today we are interviewing Jula Wren, The Mandalorian of Tucson. You may have seen videos of Jula Wren riding around on his motorcycle in the Tucson area. If you haven't, you owe it to yourself to check them out. Uh, there are tons of videos. Uh, Jula did become enamored with the Mandalorian series and started a cosplay riding his motorcycle around town, as I said, and soon he realized he could use this persona for good. I'll let him share more. Jula Wren, it is so great to have you on the Christian Nerds Unite podcast. Um, the Mandalorian of Tucson, as you are known. Um, right. Tell us a little bit about who Jula Wren is. I am Jula, the Mandalorian of Tucson. I, uh, what I do is I, every weekend or when every weekend I get a chance, I try to get out of my speeder bike and I ride around town and do good deeds for kids. I go up to random parks and hand out uh, patches, uh, hand out uh, mythosaur patches that you can see right here. Nice. I hand out patches like that. And if they have that patch, that means they can tell people that they're actual Mandalorians. They're actually foundlings. <laughs> and I hadn't thought about it until about last year. So I don't know, not even last year, but almost two years ago. Uh, you know, I'm, I was still new to Star Wars and the Mandalorian, and somebody said you should start your own house, and I was I had no idea what that meant. I don't know what these people are talking. They were talking. <laughs> there was this is Star Wars lingo, and you know, I was never into any of that stuff. So, uh, whenever I started looking into it, I got into the, well. To, if we get started on the how I got started on the Mandalorian idea concept, it was back in uh, 2020 before all the lockdowns and the stuff mm. that was going on. And a friend of mine, he when I was overseas, I was working. Uh, I would just say I was I was living the real Mandalorian life. And um, one of my friends, he was a former Armored Ranger, and we were working together as independent contractors. And he had moved. He had decided to take a task order, take a contract in Afghanistan. I stayed in Iraq, but when he went to Afghanistan, I guess he had some more spare time. And back on Facebook, when I had a real, when I had my own personal page, he kept. Uh, he was like tagging me in all of this Star Wars Mandalorian stuff. He's like, this guy's just like us, man. He's a total, you know, he's awesome. And I was like, dude, I, did, I just kind of scrolled past the post and then he did it again. And then he did it a third time. It was the second trailer of the first season of Mandalorian. Mm. And so I was like, all right, man, what, what, why are you bothering me with this nerdy stuff? <laughs> so I clicked on it. And I saw the trailer, and I was like, oh, man, this is like some kind of like space western, man. This is all right. I mean, let me watch this. So then I watched the first episode, and I was hooked ever since. I was like, oh, my gosh. I can, I can actually identify with this guy with the creed, and, you know, you, you swear to allegiance and honor, loyalty, uh, sacrifice. I mean, that's what it is here on the flag, strength, honor, and loyalty on the Mandalorian flag. I was like, dude, that that's the kind of lifestyle we come from. We both he he came from a Ranger regiment, I came from an air assault infantry unit, and then we both became independent contractors working in, as civilian contractors overseas and mm. it was like, wow, I that that's what the Mandalorian, or at least that's what Din Djarin, but most of the Mandalorians that left after Mandalore was taken out, they were all working as independent contractors. I was like, man, I can identify with this guy's lifestyle, his commitment, and when he has to when when it was time for him to go back and save Grogu, at the time they didn't have a name. It was just Baby Yoda that, that took over the world. <laughs> uh, I was like, man, this guy has you know good morals, good character. Yeah, some, if he has to violate the creed to save a child, I was like, man, I was, you know, there's that could have been me at any moment. I mean, that that is that's just unbelievable. So I was able to identify with a lot of the um, the character, not of Din Djarin, but of the Mandalorians. So I did before mm -hmm. I got more into it. I studied their history. I studied their culture. I had to first. I had to learn like Star Wars lingo, and <laughs> I had to learn the whole Star Wars fandom stuff because a lot of stuff wasn't making sense to me. I was like, you know, I, I didn't know. Oh yeah, you know what these uh, what the timelines represented. They didn't use our timelines. They used different timelines, and yeah. So then the when you follow the timelines of uh, what was this guy Jango Fett, the uh, cloned yep. so called father of Boba Fett. I guess when you start following the timelines and you start going back and I started looking into uh, uh, Sabine Wren, a history of the Darksaber. 
I watched this insanely long documentary about the Mandalorians that had, it wasn't really much to do with Star Wars. It was an actual documentary on the history of Mandalorians. And it seemed to me that whoever, I don't know if it was, uh, you know, what's that guy's name? Uh, Paul Smith or Paul Joseph Smith. He's one of the Star Wars uh, writers and advisors. And the people that were creating the Mandalorian idea, it, it seemed like, some of the things that they had incorporated into the idea of a Mandalorian was like a mixture between um, like a, a mixture between patriotism, uh, samurai warrior code, and the original 8, 17, 1800 Wild West man of your word type thing. Mm -hmm. So combining all of that kind of... Uh, that foundation of strength and loyalty and honor, it was one of those, it was almost like a hundred percent accountable warrior ethos. And I thought, man, when I started seeing that, that, uh, you know, Mandalorian is not a race, it's a creed. Mm -hmm. And the creed is a set of values that almost mirrored the creed of infantrymen, operators, samurais, mm -hmm. honorable Western cowboy marshals and, I thought, man, this this is this is where it's at. This is unbelievable. So I started doing more research into it, and I was like, man, I, I was watching the man. I was watching it over and over again. You know, every night I come home from the gym, <laughs> I go to work all day, and then go to the gym and come home. You know, put in a full, you know, fourteen hour day, and turn on the Mandalorian, and have a have a glass of tea, and and just rewatch episodes like man this is unbelievable when season two came out and then i watched the book of boba fett but uh when after season one uh it was in i want to say february of february 2020 in mm -hmm. march of 20 the next month um uh, uh, i bought a motorcycle and i've never ridden one in my life i've, I've i'm I'm an older fellow, so just to give you an idea, my son, he's a, he's a tattoo artist and a personal trainer in Florida. So that's how old I am. Okay. <laughs> but uh, I bought a motorcycle, never rode one in my life. It was a, I, I bought a speeder bike, a 2020 sports bike, and started learning how to ride it and getting good at it. And I was like, man, I don't like this uh, cheap stock helmet that uh, this dealership asked me to buy. So... I took my old helmet that I actually wore in Iraq. This is my actual helmet that I wore. Mm. But I didn't... Uh, this here, people think it's a full helmet. It's actually a two-piece. You could see. Yeah. It's actually just a face shield. You okay. could buy this face shield and then mount it to this helmet. That's why you could still see that I have a night vision capability here. I could mount on my night <laughs> vision and flip it down. Nice. Yeah, so... I decided I'm going to do that. So I was just riding around with the helmet and people were like, oh, that's so cool. And everybody was smiling and laughing and having a good time. Just me riding around trying to learn how to have a, ride a motorcycle without getting and, into an accident. <laughs> and I think I heard about you originally from seeing a video on you, on Facebook of you riding past someone on your motorcycle and your helmet. <laughs> yeah. That, uh, there's been a bunch of videos. So uh, the one that I can remember, there's two that I know of that got millions of views. It was when I had just got my full body armor together. Like I was like, yeah. okay, I'm going all in. I'm putting all the armor on. I got, I bought a, I bought Grogu. He's going to ride on the back of the speeder bike. <laughs> and I guess somebody had filmed me, you know, standing up on my motorcycle. And then the other one was, uh, uh, me saluting them and saying hi. And it was unbelievable. <laughs> all of a sudden it was like, man, it took off. And so the the whole idea of giving out the patches and starting my own little clan is called the Western Mandalorian Ranger Clan. And I got the idea from since we're out here in the West, it's kind of looking like it kind of looks like, uh, you know, Mos Pelgo or something like that. Or I guess they renamed it Freetown, but it's kind of the West here. So I was like, well, I can identify with that. And in the military is an 11 Bravo in the army. That's an infantryman. But the highest standard of that is the Rangers. But being a ranger in Arizona or Texas is more catered to law enforcement. So it's kind of like a hybrid mix of mm -hmm. being uh, a Southwest ranger slash, uh, 
military slash just a fun organization group to be a part of. It's not an official organization. It's just when kids mm -hmm. walk around town or when kids are at like, you know, these festivals that we're having at the rodeo and stuff like that, they'll walk around with the patch that I gave them. They'll have it on their hat or on their shirt or something, or the Girl Scouts have actually sewn on the back of their vests because it's authorized. And people will say, hey, you're a foundling. You know, Jula. And it's like, oh, my <laughs> God, it's turning into a thing. And ever since then, it's been going wild. So now it's like after starting on year three, I didn't think it was going to get this far. <laughs> it was just me just riding around, handing out some cool stuff, take some pictures. It wasn't even about taking a pictures. I was just going to surprise people and, and ride around because I thought it looked cool. I was just turning into a little kid that I never got to be growing up. So it's like, oh, man, I get to dress up as a Mandalorian and ride around on a motorcycle. And then everybody was like, man, that is so cool. Man, people were messaging me. Next thing you know, I was on the news a bunch of times. People did articles about me. And it just went across the nation. Now I got followers, places I'd never even heard of, like Hobart, Tanzania. I was like, Hobart, Tanzania? I'm looking at this person's profile. I was like, is this a bot or is this for real? <laughs> and then people will message me from other countries. I can tell they're being genuine because their English is not the best. Mm -hmm. But I can tell that they're really saying that, you know, you know, again, they're just telling me how much of a great thing I am. And, you know, some people, there was one guy in, uh, uh, what was it? Not, not Italy, Greece. Uh, he said, uh, he asked me when I'm going to come to, uh, Europe. <laughs> and right around, I was like, Oh my gosh, these people wanted to come to Europe. And next thing you know, somebody saw the post and then I was getting people from Oslo, Norway and, uh, places like uh, Copenhagen, of course, uh, the UK and Germany and stuff mm -hmm. like that. I was like, wow, am I really like, is this, is this really happening? I mean, all I do is just ride around this, this, this sleepy small city called Tucson. It's like taking off and like the news wants me there to do, you know, more videos. And the, the guy that there's one of the no local news outlets, the, the cameraman, and one of the video editors, they were like, hey, anytime you want to like do cool videos or you want to do like TikTok or you want to make some fun <laughs> stuff, just let me know. We can I can do that, man. I, this, this would be great. And I thought, man, I can't believe this is becoming a thing. Oh, I mean, I seriously <laughs> there, there was when it first started, it was just me riding around the city and riding around parks and stuff like that. Just saying hi to people. And if I see some kids here. Here's a patch and a gift card. Go get some ice cream and celebrate today. You're a Mandalorian. And then it took off and it had no intention of this happening. None. There was no intention of this. I had no, I mean, like this, this picture frame here, it says Arizona's heart and soul. I was nominated as Arizona's heart and soul. Nice. Are you kidding me right now? <laughs> <laughs> this is unbelievable. Like, like they, and then there's other things I've been nominated for. I have other things here hanging on the wall that, uh, these were all things that the community voted for. And next thing you know, somebody had messaged me and said, hey, we heard you on the radio. And they re recorded it on their phone. They were like, hey, it's Jula the Mandalorian of Tucson, his very own Mandalorian. I was like, very own Mandalorian. Are you? <laughs> 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 I was like, man, this is this is unbelievable. This is how much this has taken off. So it's been an incredible journey getting to this point and all because of a former or, or a friend of mine who was a former ranger just decided to, to tag me in a bunch of stuff. Yeah. Had, had he not tagged me, none of this would have happened. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah. Well, and, and you have been using this to do good. And I know one of the things that you, uh, you made a comment on in your Facebook uh, page is, you know, you just want to, you want to make people smile. You make, want to make people feel good. Um, has it become, I know you said you never intended this to be more than just you riding around having some fun yourself. Um, and it has really outgrown what it originally was intended to be. Mm. Um, are you making it more intentional now? Uh, I actually, I don't have to make it intentional. I just look at my inbox and I see all the people's <laughs> requests. It's gotten to a point now that I've had to set up a spreadsheet like today just before we got on, um, I'm supposed to be, I, I had, this wasn't even on my schedule, but somebody had made a last second plant for me to show up during the week. I said I couldn't cause of work. Mm. And they asked me to show up. I was like, sure. After this interview, I can meet you at whatever park and we can meet your son 
Ga- or your grandson Gavin, and if he wants to be a Mandalorian, he's like, he can't wait, he can't wait. <laughs> but he doesn't know you're coming. He just, he just loves you. He just loves you so much. And I was like, wow, that's unbelievable. That there is, there's people here that just that know who I am. I'm, I'm, in a, I'm a household name into some of these people's houses. And you know, I've been to one house where they invited me over for a barbecue. And the people across the street were more excited to see me than the ones invited me. <laughs> I was like, what? So I was like, yeah. So it was kind of like a a dual a dual barbecue. Next thing you know, they came over. And like, we saw you on the news. I saw you on TikTok. I saw that video of you, you know, doing your thing on your motorcycle on on uh, Speedway. And then we saw you on the I-10 video. I was like, oh, that's so cool. And there, I was just at, I, at there, we had this uh, festival uh, last week. It's like a gemstone festival where people bring their mm-hmm. rocks and gems and stuff like that to this festival. And uh, they hit, there's this like crosswalk, they call them hawks. You just hit the button and it turns yellow, the light turns yellow and then red. Then mm-hmm. the pedestrians uh, get to get the right of way to cross the street. And so I thought I slowed down and intentionally just so I can uh, not try to speed past it. And there was a group of older, older ladies walking by across the street. And I was the first vehicle. I was probably five feet away from crosswalk. I mean, because the, there's no boundary, so you could just pull up, and it's kind of an, a smaller street. And uh, this lady was these, these these old ladies were walking by. There was four or five of them walking by, but the one closest to me, I could see that she was she was the only one looking at me and smiling. And then she was like <laughs> she was like doing this with her hands. I could tell she was nervous. And then she walked as she came right in front of my motorcycle. She she was walking by. She was like. Hi, I saw you on the news. <laughs> You're a good man. I was like, oh my God, I'm going to fall off my motorcycle. That's so cool. And she gave me a hug and took a picture real quick while the light was still red. I was like, oh my gosh. Now, this is not what it, I didn't mean for it to go this far. It's like unbelievable. It's so crazy. And now it's, you know, now it's gone all over the place. <laughs> Well, um, I know recently um, the Girl Scouts recognized you. You mentioned them earlier. Mm-hmm. I was specifically interested in that little story because my girls, uh, which are grown now as well, mm-hmm. uh, my girls were both girl long-term Girl Scouts, and my wife was a, a Girl Scout leader for many years. Um, how did the Girl Scout thing start happening? Uh, it started off back in it was was still early in uh 2020 and uh one of the the parents of one of the foundlings she was a big star wars fan and you know she liked the whole jedi thing and as i learned over the years of studying star wars mandalorian that uh, mandalorians see jedis as enemy sorcerers and i thought well how would i ever become an interest to them to her but if she likes jedis then you know hey i guess i can show up so she had asked me to show up and meet her daughter and one of her friends but they were i I didn't know they were girl scouts Mm -hmm. i was just there to talk to them about i was just there to show up and give them the patch and a gift card and stuff like that and what i do is whenever i stick around when parents want to stick around and want me to talk to their kids i always push uh the idea of stem science technology engineering mathematics medicine foreign languages things like that that will help them uh, uh, improve themselves academically. Mm-hmm. And I always try to push, you know, to get them to learn that kind of stuff and to get them, get the future generation to be uh, more scientifically orientated. And as, as an aeronautical engineer, uh, now that I've transitioned careers to being an engineer and no longer living the Mandalorian life as an independent contractor, I've learned that when you, continue to see things more when you're able to see things more academically things become more sound to you and you start to see Mm -hmm. things differently like oh i understand and i get it and it 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 can make the kids a lot more uh how would i put this they'd be more ben they'd be more beneficial to a community when they could become uh an inventor they can invent something Mm. through science technology engineering mathematics and they could design something that could help somebody save somebody's life or even so much so as to design a better light bulb i mean we got light bulbs zapping out every week so i mean why don't we just get these kids to maybe start 
uh, getting them more involved to create more future Mandalorian scientists in the community. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so when that, uh, whenever I came to a seer, I was like, well, I'll, I'll re- bring her in and I'll give her the patch and I'll make, cause I record the videos on my GoPro and I'll call her the first female or, or the first Jedi Mandalorian. And she comes from troop 60. So I just renamed it the Jedi order 60 or Jedi troop order 60 <laughs> as a part of the Mandalorian tribe as part of the clan. And so she's the second Jedi Mandalorian foundling in the clan. And when I found out they were Girl Scouts, her mom was like, yeah, she's a Girl Scout too. She wants you to come hang out. As soon as I came and hung out with the Girl Scouts, it was like, next thing you know, we got Troop 678, we got Troop 1284. <laughs> we got so many troops, I have it written down. I have to have keep a list of them and to try to remember all the troops. So every weekend I'm, I'm going to see troops. Tomorrow I'm going to see uh, uh, what troop? I have to go back and check. There's so many troops, but yes. there's one little girl in this troop that uh, her name's Bailey, and she's five years old, I believe. And whenever I go to see that this troop, the first thing that she does is she runs up to me and grabs my hand and holds my hand and doesn't let go. It's the most <laughs> unbelievable thing. And there's times that I've pulled up into parks and neighborhoods where. I could tell the neighborhood's probably not the safest neighborhood, but since I've been doing this long enough now that I can go into any neighborhood, no matter how dangerous Mm -hmm. or nice it is, I can go. I have a pass anywhere here in Tucson, but I can go into some neighborhoods where I I would think, yeah, it's kind of sketchy, but I know no one's going to do anything. But maybe there's some kids that maybe live in a fortunate household that maybe their parents can afford Disney Plus and allow their (laughs) kids to see Grogu and Baby Yoda. And then some of them, I could tell have never watched Star Wars or seen the Mandalorian, never heard of Grogu. So they'll see me and there's some kids that be that will stop and get scared and kind of start running. And I'm like, oh, oh. <laughs> but then the kids that are running away, the other kids will see that what they're running from. And they're like, no, that's the Mandalorian. So then you'll see kids crossing each other, one running away, <laughs> a, a few running away, and then a whole group, a whole slew of them following me and trying to chase me down. <laughs> So it's actually pretty cool to see some of these kids are like, oh, and then the ones that were scared end up coming back and they're like, oh, that's so cool. Then they go back home and show their parents. And then I'll get some random message from some parent uh, saying that, hey, you saw my kid at the park and they have a patch and they're so happy. And then they'll send me pictures of them eating the ice cream or the gift card <laughs> that I give them. And now then they said that they've never even heard of Star Wars and the Mandalorian. Now they want Mandalorian backpacks and T-shirts. So like, oh, <laughs> no. <laughs> Not my fault. <laughs> yeah. And so whenever they do, so whenever where I can find a store, I got people that are that will message me and send me pictures of like a grocery store or Costco or or whatever art shop where they're sending or selling Mandalorian stuff. There'd be you know a whole shelf of backpacks and blankets and a bunch of Mandalorian stuff. It's like if there's a sale going on, I'll spend 200 bucks on a whole bunch of stuff. Just fill up my duffel bag and just ride around and hand it out to parks. <laughs> Find nice. kids, give them a give them a backpack, and they'll be like, oh, it's a Mandalorian backpack. And then they'll open it up and see a little blanket or a fleece or something. And then I'll ask them, hey, you want to be a Mandalorian like me? But they already know the question is coming. After a couple of years, they know it's coming. So those, they, <laughs> some of the kids, are the ones that are you know close to teenagers, they're expecting the gift card. They want that ice cream gift card and the patch. That's all they want. They don't care about any <laughs> toys. They're like, they just want the patch and the gift card. I want to be able to wear that patch everywhere I go and have that ice cream. And then I, you know, I keep up with foundlings. You know, I don't, I don't just see them once and leave. I keep up with mm-hmm. a lot of them. And uh, about six months ago, I went to visit one, one of the foundlings. And uh, his name's Wyatt he keeps his patch everywhere he goes and he was like and and the patches i was giving out when i first saw him he was probably i think like the 17th foundling in the beginning i'm up to over 400 now oh wow but uh yeah our our clan is heavy and when i went to go visit him he's like yeah this is the first patch i forgot the patches that i was giving out in the first year the vendors don't make them anymore so i've moved to a new vendor and the quality is still the same it's just a different shape of the patch Oh yeah, and he had pulled his patch out of his pocket, and it had felt like it had been done three tours in Afghanistan. And I was like, "What? What did you do to it?" And his mom smiled and was like, "He brings his patch everywhere he goes. He doesn't go anywhere. He's traveled to New York with it. 
He goes everywhere. If he forgets anything, it won't be the patch. He's forgot. He's forgot his boarding pass, but he made sure he had his patch. I was like, oh my <laughs> gosh, my man is my little dude Wyatt. He's uh he he tries to attend festivals with me. I bought him a helmet too. I bought him um an actual helmet. The helmets uh, just as an FYI for everybody listening. This isn't a plug for uh, Etsy, but in, I I buy the helmets off of Etsy from a guy. The his the vendor's name is Zero Cool Prop Shop. And the reason why is because it's not 3D printed. This guy hand makes his helmets, and it takes about two weeks to a month, depending on how long. Because of the material he has to do, he has to put mm. the material on it, then let it rest, let it sit for 24 to 48 hours to dry. And then he'll put uh, more material on it, more material. And it's all handmade, custom-made individually. This isn't 3D printed in some factory. This is handmade right here in America. He's out. I think he's based out of Tennessee. So hmm. uh, each helmet is about 170 bucks. So maybe once a month or every other month, whenever these foundlings that are really dedicated and want me in their lives, and I know a birthday's coming up. I mean, I got a couple helmets right now sitting over here um, in my culver here, and ready to be unboxed. And I still have to take all the the paper out and the packaging and stuff. But I make I set it up to when I bring them the box. I mean, I've done it long enough now that when they see when they see Jula walking up with a box, the kids know what time it is. They're like, "Oh my god, am I gonna get a helmet? Am I gonna get a helmet? Is it really happening? I'm gonna be a Mandalorian for real this time." And then they'll actually take the patch that I gave them, whether it's been a month or six months ago. They'll take that same weathered up patch that I gave them, and they'll put it on the back of their helmet just like I do. Nice. It's unbelievable. And then they and I also buy them their own kafayas. This is the actual kafaya I wore in Iraq. But I always ask the parents, you know, what's uh what's his what's his or her favorite color? And then they'll mm. say, Oh, their favorite color is this, and then I'll go buy a kafaya just like mine, but in their favorite color. Nice. So they'll get the helmet and a kafaya. And then they'll put the same patch that I gave them, whether it was a year ago or a month ago, they'll put it on the back of their helmet. Like, I'm just like Jilo for a part of the clan. <laughs> I was like, yeah, <laughs> Western Mandalorian Ranger clan. <laughs> but well, yeah. um, I know uh, a lot of my, um, a lot of the people who, who listen to this show mm. uh, are into, you know, different fandoms, not necessarily all Star Wars, but uh, mm -hmm. I, uh, I know some of them would be super interested in figuring out how to do good with their fandom and do you have any just basic recommendations for somebody who just wants to you know start trying to do good with their fandom mm, man that's a that is a absolutely good question well when i first started doing this i tried to get other people to do it and for some reason i don't know what's going on in the world today but this was back in 2020 people thought i was crazy and people were saying, you know, inappropriate things about me and, and certain Facebook uh, pages. And it was actually kind of good because there were people actually coming to my defense, people I had no idea who these people were. And they would come to my defense. And I was like, oh, oh that's pretty cool. People are defending me. They have no idea who I am. So uh, I kind of gave up on trying to influence other adults. I mm. try to now influence the children to get them to be more kind and understanding and be more academically sound, have some self strength and, and, you know, learn to be more smart in, in school and trying to get other adults to do things. I would say that if they wanted to, um, if they wanted to get out and do good within their community, I would just say, uh, don't try to, what, what helped me was I stopped caring what the public thought and I stopped mm. caring what, others said and i focused my visor right on that child that child that looks at me and says i want to grow up to be like you oh, man <clears throat> that is the focus okay mm -hmm. don't worry about what other people have to say if you can influence one child let that be the motivation all right that is where it should go don't worry about what others say if you can influence one child to smile and say you're so cool. Let that be the motivation to keep going. I mean, uh, just let your let your uh, your motive of doing good with your identity, whether you're dressing up as a Jedi or whether you're dressing up as um, 
you know, a, a, a Marvel character or you like DC or Batman, you know, that that's, that's, that's fun stuff. People love to see that. And then even if you're dressed up as a stormtrooper, believe it or not, people actually like that. I don't know how, yeah. but hey, <laughs> <laughs> even if you're dressed up like that, if you can just spread one smile to a child, you're effectively changing their life. I mean, because you don't know, had you never got up and did this, like, I don't know. I think about this very often when I'm in the gym working out. And I wonder, I think back to like, I think back to kids that some of the foundlings of the, in, the, in the early time when, in, when I first started doing it in 2020. And this was during like lockdowns and people were afraid of t- being around each other. At that time, kids saw me and it was like coronavirus disappeared. They were like, what coronavirus? We got the Mandalorian here. <laughs> we got a Mandalorian <laughs> in our presence. And so uh, I think about, you know, some of these foundlings from 2020, you know, that they have helmets and they have the patch and they have the kafaya. Some of them already got whole outfits and costumes I've done pictures with and went to functions with them. And I wonder, like, where would they be today if they never got a helmet, they never got a patch, they never got a kafaya, they just lived their lives as if I never existed. I wonder where they would be. I wonder what their inspiration and motivations would be because some of the foundlings now, like uh, one of the earlier ones, uh, his name is Tanner. He's he goes by the Raptor Foundling because he wants to be an F twenty two Raptor pilot when he grows up. Mm-hmm. So the Raptor Foundling is riding a motorcycle and he's six years old. <laughs> 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 yeah, so he's either six or eight. I keep getting all of the ages mixed up. They're all between <laughs> four and nine. <laughs> but either way, I think he's you know what? I think he's eight. I take that back. He might be, eight. but he's he's riding a dirt bike out in the desert. I, I mean. It's just unbelievable <laughs> how much influence that I've had on these kids. And it's like, I, I do think back and I wonder, like, what if I never did this? Like, where would they be today? Like, where would little Alexandra be? Where would uh, Tanner be? Where would, you know, Alexis be? Where would these kids be if I never came to their Girl Scout booths and helped them sell Girl Scout cookies? Or where would I be if I never came to their birthday party or uh, where would I be if, like, for example, uh, not too long ago, I was asked by a teacher, a school teacher at uh, Vesey Elementary School here in Tucson. And she asked me, she did a, a we, we pulled up a Zoom interview. And then when she pulled up the Zoom interview, all these windows popped up out of nowhere. And it was the whole class. I was like, <laughs> whoa, I didn't see this one coming. So now next to you, I'm giving a speech and uh, well, something I thought it was just going to be a few questions and, you know, some fun stuff and how do we do good deeds. And it turned into, you know, a speech. I was sitting there talking to the whole class, giving a motivational speech, emphasizing uh, how, why you should do good in school and how it can make life better for you and for everybody in the community. When you build something good or you become a pilot or you study medicine, you could save people's lives. And I could see it was, I wish I had recorded it. I mean, I was trying not to laugh because some of the kids got like this close to the camera and their mouths were <laughs> wide open, like just wide, their mouths were just wide open and gawking and staring. And then they would like sit back and the camera would pan out. And then behind them was their whole family just watching. And I was like, holy moly, <laughs> I've been talking to the kids and their families. Nice. And then from there, it was just, it just kept on spreading. So. It's been an incredible journey, and I feel like even though I'm starting year three, it almost feels like it's just still beginning because I'm still meeting people. I'm still going to people's houses. I'm still going to be going to – I still got another meetup tonight. I got another one tomorrow with another Girl Scout troop, so it's going to be <laughs> – it's going to be fun. <laughs> that sounds like a blast. Oh, well, yeah. <laughs> you, you, you mentioned you're just entering year three. Um, do you see – do you have an idea of what the future for the Mandalorian of Tucson is going to be? Uh, that I don't know because, oh, how would I put this? Um, the reason why is because I've been messaged by certain people that have sent me certain things that, you know, it, it would have been a hell of an offer if I took it. Let's just say it would be a hell of an offer if I took it. And, I would have, uh, if I had taken the offer, I know that I would have immediately been perceived as somebody who was trying to seek financial benefit. Mm. And so I've had to turn down an offer on, on something that I want to get into, but 
Uh, there's some other things that people ask me to get involved with that I know that if I did get involved with this stuff, that especially one offer that I had, and then another one, we'll just I'll just use the I'll just use the term politically orientated. Had I taken these offers for whether it's entertainment or political orientation, I would have financially benefited greatly. But then I would have lost the motive. I would have lost the narrative. Like this, this is mm. for my community. This is for my people. This is for the children here and mm. and the people across America and around the world that watch my videos and they message me. You know, I, just, I, I mean, every other day, sometimes it'll be a streak of every day that I'll just get a random message from somebody like in Wisconsin or something or in Utah or in South Carolina. Somebody messaged me saying, man, I saw your videos, man. You are a great person. I can't believe you've been doing it for this long and you're making people feel good. And or, through all the some, crazy hard times that's going on in the or world. Or some rando from Oklahoma who saw you oh, on the yeah, internet and guy. wanted you to come <laughs> on the podcast. Uh, one, of my, uh, one of my earliest followers that friended me and was following me is from uh, Oklahoma. She was following her name's Danielle Walker. Shout out to Danielle Walker. She is the one that was like sharing my work. And this is back when I had like 30 friends on Facebook and that was it. I didn't have a fan page. I didn't have a TikTok. I didn't have anything. I, I was, I still wondered like, how did these people find me? Like they have no idea who I am. So I don't have any family or friends here in Tucson. I'm just by myself. I live alone. And so I wonder like, how did these people in Oklahoma of all places find me so she was one of them and i was like wow that is unbelievable so i was like wow <laughs> how are these people knowing but yeah all these people messaging me around and you know, telling me that how i'm doing great things and it's like as far as what the future holds um right now i i, I want to i'm going to stay as local as possible i mean i know people are trying to pull me into things that because i have a big influence on people uh, I know people are trying to, I won't say pull me in, but they would like me to be a part of their operation, whether mm. it be like an entertainment orientated or politically orientated. I just stay away from any of those commitments because I want I want the world to know that my commitment is right here in Tucson because, I mean, what there is nothing else for these kids to look up to. I mean, when you say Tucson, Arizona, who named me your top three notable people most people can barely name one or two they'll say oh well rob gronkowski played football there or deandre ayton but they didn't do anything for the community here for the kids they didn't do anything like that once they mm -hmm. got their fat paycheck and they, they bounced they never came back ever again they left tucson because tucson's got a bad reputation and so it's kind of like you know coming to coming here and it's like being I guess that's one reason why it got taken by storm is is because you know into the storm here in Tucson, Arizona, people just was like, "Wow, this is unbelievable!" And you know, there, I, there was it, I've had some of the most funniest accusations. Like they thought some people thought I was I was actually Pedro Pascal. Some people thought that I was <laughs> actually some rich millionaire that decided to leave Hollywood and moved to Tucson and you know it was unbelievable some of the funniest stories one person thought I was a hologram and I was like okay <laughs> this okay. is yeah because I was I used to do live streams on my Facebook when I had time mm -hmm. and I would answer people's questions in the community and you know I would only do it on Facebook not on YouTube or any other place because I don't want people to donate people will send me well if I go on platforms or people will send me donations Mm. then I, ha I have no else, uh, no other way of you know playing the whole tax game. And you know, I don't want to have to hire a CPA and, again and start going through all of this. It's just much easier if I just buy it out of my own pocket, just pay for it out of my own pocket, do a live stream on, do my live streams on Facebook. <laughs> that way it's impossible for anybody to donate to me or give me any money or uh, send me links that, you know, because I, ha I have no link. I don't have a Patreon or Subscribestar or anything like that. So it's it's almost virtually impossible to donate to me. I will say there is one way to do it, but I'm not going to tell you. And I don't <laughs> I expect to not see a donation now, out of the thousands and thousands of people that follow me. I mean, almost 5,000 on TikTok and thousands on Facebook, but and of course now people the thousands that follow you will see there's only one no no no. Two people 
<laughs> in the last almost three years that have cracked the code and found out how to donate to me secretly. And so one of them is in Washington and the other one is in Virginia. You do know who you are if you're watching. Okay. <laughs> I'll just, I'll, I'll give a, I'll give a, I'll give a hint to their names if they ever watch this. Okay. Genie in a bottle and here kitty kitty. Okay. <laughs> they somehow cracked the code. So what I do is if they, if I see that, what I do is say uh, one of them, donated a uh, a $50 gift card. So what I do is I put up, I match their donation and then I take the proof of what they bought and I'll take a picture of the receipt of all of the patches that I bought for, for the foundlings or when I say the children and then I hand them out and they become foundlings. Mm -hmm. And then I will make the videos and I will tag every single video of the <laughs> of the foundling they sponsor. So if you go back and watch all my videos of, of uh, foundlings that I meet, You'll see in the bottom of the description, it says sponsored, the you know, patch sponsored by so and so, uh, shirt sponsored by so and so, mm. gift card sponsored by so and so. And you'll see it five videos in a row, that same person. That's because I paid for the gift card and patches with their money. And then I match it without, without giving any credit. I just match it to the community for free. Awesome. Yeah. Well, I know you are trying to stay local. Yep. And, uh, but, you you are definitely worldwide mm -hmm. but uh how can people connect with you if they want to uh at least follow you how can they follow you right now uh, they can go to my fan page on uh jula the mandalorian of tucson that's where my fan page is and that's on I facebook also, right yeah it's on facebook and then also my other facebook page is jula ren j-u-l-a is my first name last name is ren w-r-e-n and my TikTok is because there's not enough characters for me to put Jula the Mandalorian of Tucson. <laughs> <laughs> I had to put Jula the Mandalorian of five two zero, but it's also on my um, on my uh, Facebook pa fan Facebook fan page. It says I'm also on TikTok as Jula the Mandalorian of five two zero. But as far as me just trying to stay local, I do plan on trying to one of these days. I I, I have it in my head that I want to do it. And some places that I want to stop by. I do kind of sort of want to do, uh, I want to put not like a cross country recruitment thing, but to stop in select states mm. and visit some people because there's kids. I mean, because there's kids that, that, that love what I do, their parents follow me. And so what I'll do is I'll talk to their parents and I'll get their address and I'll, send, I'll make a video just for them. And then I'll send them a patch and a gift card, but usually the gift card won't be a restaurant from here. It obviously be a restaurant from where they live, say in Florida. So I have foundlings in Washington, California, Texas, New Mexico, um, Alabama, Illinois, uh, and Michigan for sure that I can think of off the top mm -hmm. of my head. And then my next goal would be to try to get to, uh, for sure, Maine, Oklahoma. Maine and Oklahoma for sure. You make and it to Oklahoma, I'll, I, yeah, I'll take you out for coffee. Oh, yeah, perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Cause, so Maine and Oklahoma, only because of uh, Daniel Walker lives there, and she's one of my big-time followers and fans, so I have to see her. So Maine, Oklahoma for sure, Minnesota, and um, get up to Colorado and uh, Nevada sometime, the surrounding states, because i got a lot of mm. followers there. And then down in Mexico, i got followers from – sonora all the way down to monterey i mean even down to ecuador i couldn't believe it i've never even heard of why i kill ecuador until i started a fan page i was like why i kill ecuador and this guy started sharing my videos i was like that is so cool and then he got all these people of course i didn't understand the comments because they were all in spanish but <laughs> i hit the translate button they'd be like have this mandalorian come to venezuela and save us all kinds of <laughs> i was like whoa man i guess i gotta go got some bounty work in south america for a little bit <laughs> that's awesome yeah that it's is so awesome cool. yeah it's all these people were like man you got to come to you know ecuador i was like oh, i don't know if the state department will allow that but maybe if i can go in as a mandalorian who knows <laughs> well i want to honor your time and i know you have uh, someplace else to be because you have to go I hang out with another is. you got to hang out with another foundling here in a little bit yep. um Anything else that you want to share with the, the people who are listening? Uh, if you guys want to follow me, the best way to donate, a lot of people ask of how they could donate because, uh, you know, I've 
just share my videos is all I ask. Just randomly click on videos and scroll through any of the video on my fan page or on my uh, personal page, Jula Ren, and just find a video that you like. And if you could, if you like it, identify with it and say it's really cool, and then just share it. And that's that. Because as long as it, it's long as it's the smile that I'm looking for, that's what I tell the Girl Scouts. What I'll do is I'll show up and I'll spend a hundred dollars on cookies. I'll get twenty boxes and. I'll teach the kids. Okay, this is this is this is our first social experiment. Okay, so you guys have been trying to sell cookies for the last hour, right? And you guys have been doing a pretty good job. Now I want to put you on a new challenge. You're gonna take these cookies and you're gonna give them away. And they would try to give them away, and nobody wanted them. They couldn't believe it. <laughs> and they were like, they look up. They're like, Mando, they don't want free cookies. I don't know what's wrong with these people. And I was like, that's the thing. You know, we're, we're especially here in Tucson. We, you're living in a in a society here where people think you're always up to something. People can never believe or trust you that you're trying to do good in the community. And so, if you get out there and you really try, say, "Here, it's free." They're not going to take it. You got to explain to them. And in some cases, uh, one of them was Operation Fun Fury, where we're going to make these people have fun with our fury we're going <laughs> to use fury and force to push these cookies on you for free and you're going to take it you're going to like it and you're going to smile and we would run up to people we would walk by nonchalant me and one girl scout we would you know cross the street at walmart or something they'd be holding my hand and we'd walk up by a car and we, i would say look at that see their, their window is wide open and they'd be like <laughs> waiting for a parking spot their window is wide open we walk by and i'd be like okay run over there and throw the cookies in their lap and run and run back to me <laughs> And they'll go, they'll run up to their, here's some cookies, have a nice day, throw it in their cab or in their car, <laughs> run and grab my hand and we run away. <laughs> <laughs> and you'll see people driving off and then they'll stop and they'll like, wave high and out the window and they're like, oh, thank you. And one guy came back and turned all the way around. He, had, he already started eating the cookies because he came back and did a U-turn. He's like, thanks, man, no, this is the way. I was like, yes, this is the way. <laughs> <laughs> and so the crowd and people on the outside around the booth started seeing it and they thought it was amazing. And everybody started pulling out their phones and recording it. We're running around the parking lot, giving cookies to people and just dropping it off in their carts and running, dropping it off on people's vehicles. It was, it was amazing. And so when I do stuff like that with Girl Scouts and other kids in the, in the community, we just try to push the, uh, the idea of uh, humanitarian community service kind of mm -hmm. thing at our own sacrifice. I mean, still do, I still try to get kids to, you know, uh, try to inspire them towards the STEM field, STEM learning, and personal health, and to try to influence some of the kids to get into martial arts and to teach them to be disciplined. And then when they have time, even if it's just once a month, even if you only got like an hour to come hang out with me and go do good deeds somewhere, we can go hang out and make a TikTok video at the mall or something, <laughs> really just film other people looking at us. <laughs> Film awesome. other people filming us. <laughs> Just make people smile and laugh. Well, uh, Jula, it has been a pleasure having you on the show today. And uh, I, I just want to thank you so much for coming on. It has been an incredible honor, my friend. Thank you, Rick, for having me on. It's been a while since I've been on a podcast. So <laughs> I've, been on the, I've been on a couple of them, but I was definitely looking forward to this one. I'll definitely have you back sometime. This is the way. It was great having Jula on the podcast today, and I love his heart for the people and the children of Tucson. Well, I'm going to put links down below to uh, all of his social accounts so you can follow him if you'd like. Um, well, that's really all I have for you today. Don't forget to like, subscribe, follow, click, just click all those buttons, whatever buttons are down there. That way you can keep up with all of the new content as we release it. And you can find all of our social links, links to our YouTube channel, and to our online store at ChristianNerdsUnite.com. And while you're there, click on the support tab. We would love to have you as a Patreon. But before I go, I do want to leave you with this blessing from Philippians 1. And this is my prayer, that your love may abound more and more in knowledge and depth of insight, so that you may be able to discern what is best and may be pure and blameless for the day of Christ filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ to the glory and praise of God. We'll see you next week. Blessings.